Hey friends, it's Dimitri with Urbashka Streetwear. So here is a new patch that I just received the other day. It's based off of an uh, old design right here that we've ran for several years that's been very popular. But this time around I've decided to turn it into a, a patch form because we've never had it as a patch. If you follow our Instagram page and also this channel, then um, this is kind of cool because I haven't released this yet or shown it. So. Sometimes I will show stuff on here, kind of a sneak previews and stuff like that, and obviously behind the scenes information. But today I want to discuss kind of three simple tips that I have for making patches based on my limited experience and what I'm learning from doing it because this year I am making more and more patches. <clears throat> I recently released a patch uh, last month. It was super, super popular. We sold out of them. I just ordered more, they're coming in pretty soon, and they're on pre-order, and they're still selling right now, which is cool. Um, so, kind of, I've, I, had a, I have a feeling that patches are picking up, um, and based on my, my audience size and the kind of customers I have, they definitely want that kind of stuff, so I'm going to keep making more of them this year, and that's the goal. But I have been learning little tidbits here and there about how to do all that kind of stuff, and I haven't seen, like, videos about tips for it. So the first tip that I have is that when you're making patches, you typically want to make them, um, you want to size them in an appropriate way that makes sense for the end user. So here's kind of like what I like to do. I like to, let's, let's look at the, with the ruler. So this is three by 1.75, something like that. So you want to size patches around that sort of size not super super small like you know inch by inch and not super big like five by five something crazy like that because really people are going to be putting these on their uh, jackets their vests plate carriers bags all sorts of kind of stuff like that especially for people that do more tactical stuff like shooting and paintball airsoft that kind of stuff this is a really popular product for <clears throat> people in that kind of target market <clears throat> so that's the first simple step is to when you're designing this kind of stuff online or on your computer on uh, Adobe Illustrator and stuff like that make sure that you are appropriately sizing the file that makes sense so for instance I would not design all of these on a file that's like 13 by 17 inches which is what I normally do for uh, t-shirt artwork I have a file that big and I scale a little, a little bit down but it's in those bounds so, and this helps too, if you're a designer, you have to make sure that you're thinking about the end product because you could be designing something that's too small or too, too big. And when you print a test print out, typically I use the inkjet printer. I just print something out to see how it looked like in, in real life in person. <clears throat> uh, and then you'll know like, oh man, this is too big or too small. So for instance, I would design this on Adobe Illustrator, print it out, and the paper would come out in this size, right? And I would cut it and be like, okay, this kind of feels like it's an appropriate size for the end audience. And for this one, as you could tell, it's, it's kind of longer. It's about, I don't know, 30, 40% longer than normal patches that I make. The reason why this one's a size like this is because this is the other thing with patches is you have to think about how it's gonna be manufactured. You can't make text smaller and smaller and smaller and other artwork smaller and smaller and smaller you're going to be losing detail you want to have it at an appropriate uh, uh, level here's a perfect example of this <clears throat> some stuff you might have to cut out of your artwork in order for it to make sense as a patch or an embroidery for a hoodie or t-shirt this is also just embroidery advice so for this one we have the sticker here and um, part of the design is this little this little tagline right here. It says Fall Winter 1983. That is just a small detail I put in there. It's not actually made in 1983, obviously. Uh, that's because this was like a very key point in the Cold War. This is like when nukes were almost launched at each other, right? So that's why that detail is there. And this is also printed on t-shirts and hoodies and stuff. That's kind of important. But for the patch purposes, it is basically impossible to get this level of detail, th this small detail into a patch. So I obviously had to take that out of my design and alter, you know, the spacing and like 
centering on on the patch itself so obviously when you're designing stuff you kind of need to understand how small the embroidery can get and the way you do this is by talking with your embroiderers or if you do it yourself uh, make some test uh, embroidery and see how small you can get here's kind of the limits of it and this is cutting it really really close this was a, my first patch that I ever made it's an iron-on patch it's not a velcro patch um, and so this design is kind of fun so there's that brand WD-40 right and they make that lubricant for metal null salts or moving parts but when they originally started the way that this company started was they are making a sort of um, sh lubricant and coating for ICBM so basically weapons of mass destruction and that's where I made this parody design WMDs instead of the trademark or registered trademark I put an S right here in the circle but this is basically pushing the limits of embroidery this is how small and detailed you can get with embroidery there's no way that I would be able to detail this really small uh, stuff the last kind of tip I have and this is this video is all from just my experience maybe you won't hear these sorts of nuanced takes on stuff like this um, I made a video a couple weeks ago about how they messed up some patches now I did still sell these because people bought them and people like them although these are selling a little bit at a better rate um, because of the design originally they're supposed to be like this here's the new uh, one that they sent in at a discounted rate because they kind of messed up and I didn't look over the file well depending on how uh, you know the tolerances that your embroidery machine has or the people making your embroidery they might have you know a little bit of an issue getting clean lines so do you see the thread that's kind of jumping out on onto the white border that's definitely something to think about because you know when I got this batch probably you know 10 uh, 10 percent of the batch it had little defects like that and this is probably something I'd put in a reject bin um, as you could tell the little threads that are jumping out onto the white border and that obviously affects it now contrast this with a border that matches the design which is what I always do and what I cont will continue to do because I think it uh, looks better if that thread jumps out onto the marrowed border right here it's obviously not going to show up because the thread is matching the background right whereas as you could tell again that thread jumped out and <clears throat> you know this might be something even if your embroiderer is really really good it still might be something that will happen because if they're making hundreds or thousands of patches you know it's a given that there's going to be a couple defective ones like that but like I said, if you do a, a border that's the same color as the background, that's going to minimize the chance of stuff like that happening and uh, less defects and stuff like that. And also, I think aesthetically, it just looks better in my opinion, but that's up to you if you are making patches. So yeah, those are just three quick tips I have for patches based on my experience. And if I catch any more uh, throughout the year as I make more patches, I will let you guys know. Hope you got some value out of this, and uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below in the comment section. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.